Hello, Aaron. Hi. Welcome to our, what's the word for hastily done, uh, episode on Wonder Woman 1984, the 2021 film from Patty Jenkins. Yeah. Well, if you're if you're listening to this on the day we post this, then the mil- the movie had just come out a couple weeks prior, so we thought this was be timely to talk about the sequel. And I'm sorry if you're currently listening to this from a weird fascist dictatorship. Um, hopefully, they still have podcasts. It'll be good. Um, Aaron, I thought we would do something important and a little different with this episode. I have with me seven. Eight shots of Fireball. Oh my god. Which, I'm not sure if Fireball is still Fireball. They kind of changed it so they could sell it in gas stations. Is it a whiskey? Is Is it a scotch? Is it a a tequila? What is Fireball? I think it was more whiskey than not. And now it's just whiskey-flavored malt liquor. Oh, okay. Yeah, malt liquor. Mm, It's still 20%, so it's strong. But, um... I think it's going to be necessary covering this movie that I take a shot every time we say the words 1980s. And I don't want to lose you too early into this podcast, so I'll try to hold back uh, and only use it when it's appropriate. Well, what I was going to say is, unlike this movie, we can show restraint when it comes to discussing the 1980s. (laughs) Yes. Eh? Um, So do you want to quickly recap the events of the first wonder woman movie for our audience absolutely uh i i will say that i watched it again uh just last night uh to bone up on it and i am happy to say that my original opinion of it still stands (laughs) after all in that original opinion is that it's two-thirds a good film and totally falls apart at the end um, and I was, I took it kind of, uh, well, I don't know if I took it bad, but I, I just was like, really, everybody needs to settle down. This is not, this is not the amazing movie. Everybody's pretending it is. It's a fine film for two thirds. And then, like I said, it just kind of falls apart at the end. Yeah. With a fight scene, that's basically just every ending to every DC superhero movie. Exactly. And just many other superhero movies. And they don't always need to do that. Sometimes they don't. And that's the ones I think that are a little more memorable. The worst Marvel movie, in my opinion, is Captain America Civil War. Are you because... serious? Really? Yeah. Oh, Civil War. Yeah. I thought everybody, I thought I was thinking Winter Soldier because that's what everybody's favorite is, right? Yeah, Winter Soldier's yeah. great. Okay, man. good, good, good. Civil War, yeah. Yeah, right. Because uh, everybody gets together on that airport and all battles it out. Yeah, it's just superhero fight porn. That's all that it is. I will say, though, that that may be a little more fun, though, just because that was the first, like, Spider-Man. So there was stuff going for it. And you got to see Ant-Man become Giant Man. So I think they probably kept it a little more interesting than your average big battle royale. It wasn't the worst. Okay, but but I I haven't seen it since I originally saw it. So I will have to check it out again. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. So anyway, Uh, Wonder Woman came out in 2017. And the film yes. is highly indebted to the original DCU. I mean, it was a smack dab in the middle of the original DC uh, cinematic universe, right? Yes. Because it was a story exactly. by Snyder, and Snor- Snyder was the one that was really heading the whole thing up. So you have Man of Steel, you had Dawn of Justice, right? Batman, Superman, Dawn of Justice. BVS, yes. And then did this come out right after it? Man of Steel, BVS. Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, and then Justice League. Oh, okay. So one, uh, Justice League came out after this. Okay, interesting. Okay. Anyway, so it's right in the middle of all that. And I think it shows on the film because it's a very serious film. Uh, except yes. with Chris Pine. He comes in to kind of give a little levity to it, but he's also a very serious character. Anyway, so we learn about uh, Diana, who is a Amazon living on Themyscira which is a hidden island uh, in the middle of the Pacific? I don't know. Anyway. Somewhere. Yeah. Uh, all women. And according to her the, her mother, who's the queen, Hippolyta, I kind of went back and tried to make sure I can pronounce all these names. Seriously? Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Uh, she is the only child on the island. And why is that? She asks her mother. And she says, why sculpted you out of clay? 
and Zeus gave you life. So that's the origin they go with. And I'm not too uh, familiar with all of Wonder Woman's origins from when she was created back in the 40s till now. But there's been a couple. That's one of them. And that's what in DC <clears throat> movie cinematic universe has decided to go with. So according to her mother, she was sculpted and then... <laughs> I didn't say 80s, did I? <laughs> no, but it was just looking really good. <laughs> okay, you're already drinking. That's fine. <laughs> just to get through this, you might have a drink. Anyway, so uh, on the island, all the women are warriors. They were created by Zeus uh, in order to... Because he created mankind. And then the god of war, Ares, subverted them and made them... If that's the word... Uh, made them kind of war with each other. So then Zeus made the Amazons as peacekeepers almost to teach mankind to be good with each other. But then it kind of sounded to me like the mankind overran uh, the Amazons as well and like enslaved them and everything. So the Amazons had to fight for freedom and then they were hidden away by Zeus on this island that nobody can see. So they just live peacefully on their own and mankind has been left to its own devices and Ares killed all the other gods until Zeus cast him out. So they know that Ares is out there, and someday he will need to be destroyed by the god killer, which is a sword that they believe only Diana will be able to wield. And that's why she's being trained from a young age by her aunt, who's Robin Wright. And her name is... Antiope. Shoot. I was so good. Yeah, Ant Antiope. Yeah, General Antiope. Sweet. So, yeah. So Diana grows up. Believing all this. And then all of a sudden, Steve Trevor, who is a uh, World War I spy for the Americans working with the British, pretending to be German, is... <laughs> yeah. He lands near the island. He goes through their hidden fog and lands in the island. He lands in the water and Diana has to rescue him. It's the first time she's ever seen a man. Uh, then the Germans attack. And she likey. And she likes. Uh, well, it's Chris Pine. He's, a, he's, a, he's an attractive man. Um, if you're going to meet a man for the first time, might as well be him. <laughs> yeah, that's a little not fair. Yeah, right. It's not fair to the rest of us. <laughs> um, so the Germans attack. Uh, the women are, uh, they, they kind of hold up well, but at the same time, they're really outnumbered by this uh, gun thing that the Germans seem to have. And they kind of get massacred a little bit. Uh, although they do defeat the Germans on their beach. Uh, but this is how, but this is why Steve explains a lot to them about how there's a world war going on and it's a horrible war. And Diana really feels compelled to help, even though the rest of the Amazons are saying, like, no, you got to stay back. Let them worry about themselves. And she's like, no, if this is Ares is making all them war, we have to stop him. This is what I've been training for. And then her mother, Hippolyta, says, those are all stories. But she doesn't. So, so then I'm, I'm led to believe, like, so was she created by Zeus or was she not? Like, is this just religion in a nutshell? How it's just a lot of fun stories but none of it's really true. Is that kind of what she's saying to her? No. This like, is I why I'm a little confused in the beginning of the movie. My real only issue there is like, there's no dudes running around this island knocking up their hit her mom. Right. Like it, it was Zeus. Okay. But so therefore, the rest of the DC cinematic universe, if you're watching Superman, if you're watching Batman, all of mankind was created by Zeus. Bruce Wayne was created by Zeus. Was Superman <laughs> was Superman created and Krypton was that created by Zeus or is Zeus just an earth kind of god? Is there another god that was creating Krypton? I just for me it just opens up this whole other questions that I'm just like is this what you really want to go with Snyder? You want to say that the Greek gods are the ones that created the earth? I just find that to be silly and and a little weird. This this is the deep dive you're going to do on Wonder Woman. Yes, like, it is. <laughs> are we going to get really into the weeds here? Because if we got into the weeds on Wonder Woman 84, I'm yeah. not going to have any of this booze left. Okay. Sir. So anyways, she goes off with Steve anyways. They go to London. She's learning about civilization. Uh, she's learning that men are controlling the war, but they have such a strategic way of doing it that she's really appalled that they're just letting soldiers die. Um, I think she finally gets to Steve and says like we need to help you know because there's this dr death who's creating this poison and there's a general called lufendorf ludendorf yeah, ludendorf yeah 
and she's convinced he's the god of war. Like, if he's the one behind all this world war, if he's the one that doesn't want peace and just wants to keep warring, clearly he needs to be stopped. Once I stop him, wars will be stopped for good. So Steve's, like, humoring her, saying, like, yeah, I, you might be right. This is all a little far-fetched, but sure, you're a good fighter. Let's go along with this anyways. So they go to Belgium. They try to uh, stop. Uh, they have, a you know, they have, like, their own howling commandos, you know, be yeah, following them. that's exactly Basically, they fight, you know, stuff goes up. But they do rescue this whole city of people, this whole town. And one woman definitely kicks ass, and it was a very exciting part of the film when she is in the trenches and she battles across the trenches something that for years the british army was never able to fight or the french army whoever they are uh but she uh rallies them all and, and defeats all of the german soldiers and everything it was really cool i mean i love that part of the movie it was really good. i love that part of the movie yes yeah um but then later on uh they the the dr death and the ludendorff fire a weapon and they destroy that whole village that they just rescued so everybody dies. yeah they just that murder part. everyone <laughs> exactly so that sets her off obviously she's very angry about it um steve's uh his goal is only to stop the poison diana really wants to kill Ares, the god of war who she believes is ludendorff this finally happens she kills him but war doesn't stop uh i guess i should have mentioned there's this other guy named sir patrick morgan i believe who funds their little expedition out there because the military doesn't want him to go, so he kind of does it on the DL. I always took him as, like, an intelligence guy, wasn't he? Like, wasn't he... He was part... He's, yeah, well, he's part of the war effort in Britain. He's, like, one of the generals or whatever. But he knows that... The generals told Steve that, under no circumstances are you to go there and try to stop this doctor. We have a bigger war to fight. You can't do it. Steve and Diana go anyways... And more, and Sir Patrick is the one that helps them. He funds their mission, and him and Steve's secretary Edna have a little uh, headquarters, you know, back in London that they help them get to Belgium and stuff like that. So he's introduced as part of the war effort, and he's like their backer, and that's all we ever see of him. So after she kills Ludendorff, and you realize he wasn't the god of war, in comes Sir Patrick, who's like, ah, twist, I'm the god of war. But before that happens, and she realizes war doesn't stop when she kills Ludendorff, uh, Steve tells her, like, he's got his big speech there where he's just kind of like, look, maybe it's not real. Maybe people are just bad sometimes. And I thought that was where the movie was going, that everything she believed was just stories and that this is real life. But instead, no, they're just like, this is a DC movie produced by Snyder. So there is a god of war. <laughs> Here he is. Here's this guy that was just a character. We're going to bring him back just to be the twist villain. And then they have this big CGI battle on this airfield. And it's just, I got so bored. And I love David Thewlis, I think is how you say his name. I'm not really sure. He's a great actor. I was just actor. looking it up and that's what it looks like. Yeah. Right. He's a great and actor. I love him too. He was in Time Bandits. He was awesome. You know what I mean? I always love him. But he's delivering like the same old like cliched lines. And it's just lame, man. So I just, it killed the rest of the movie for me. However, Steve sacrifices himself to save everybody um, with the exploding poison plane. And uh, that, you know, that, that felt genuine that she lost him, you know. And then she defeats Ares finally. But I don't know if that really, I mean, there's still a World War II a couple years later. So I don't know if that really yeah. stopped war. Completely. Obviously, he must have survived. Yeah. Or I don't know. Something. I don't know. He looked like he got defeated. There's a lot to this movie that I'm leaving out. Uh, I think that Gal Gadot does a great job as Wonder Woman. Um, I do think she isn't the best actress because it kind of comes out sometimes where she's not really able to handle every kind of emotion that she right. needs. She's very lucky to be cast in this role yeah. that actually demands that she be a little rocky right. and a little artificial. Right. Um, but I think she handles the action well, so that's a plus. She looks good as Wonder Woman. And, um, you know, she's she's got some comedy chops here and there, so I think that works out. I think yeah. Chris Pine is good as Steve Trevor, and he's an important part of her history, so it's nice that they used him. Oh, I got a really simple answer there. Name one bad Chris Pine movie. 
Uh, well, I just saw Into the Woods. Do you ever watch that? Uh, it was I a Sondheim was... musical that they that Disney made. It's all about oh, fairy no. tale creatures. You know, it's like it takes Cinderella and mixes it with um, Jack and the Beanstalk and the Big Bad Wolf and a witch and Rapunzel. It like mixes them all together. It didn't do very well in theaters, and I think it quickly left. But he's in that as the uh, Prince Charming or something. It's crazy who's in this movie. Oh, it's a lot. Meryl of Streep, yeah. Emily Blunt, James Corden, Anna Kendrick, Chris Prime, Johnny. Somebody named Johnny Depp. I've never heard of. Yeah, him. Johnny Depp plays the big bad wolf, of course. Uh, yeah, so I saw that, and that kind of suffered from the same thing as Wonder Woman, in that it's two thirds a pretty good film, and then it totally devolves into this monstrosity at the end which was very boring and i almost fell asleep like i just want i didn't know why they had to do that they just feel like they, well i know why because theater goers they make the most money off 18 to 25 year old males and i guess that's what they wanted to see i don't remember wanting to see that kind of stuff when we were that age but that's kind of what we have to deal with when it comes to superhero movies at least or fantasy movies yeah, and it's pretty well documented with the first Wonder Woman that the studio heavily interfered in the ending. Jenkins has been open about that. And she, unfortunately, though, doesn't really get that excuse for Wonder Woman 1984. You wrapped it up pretty well. Like, that really covers the movie. My I synopsis. try to. Go for it. Are you ready for my synopsis? Please, yes. <clears throat> Amazonian woman meets the real world for the first time. And gets an entire platoon of men killed while trying to find the god of war who she eventually kills. Period. I don't know. They all survive except for Steve, though. Yeah, but <laughs> this is this is my argument. Uh, let's segue into 1984. Because one of the things that makes a good sequel... What makes a good sequel to you, Aaron? Well, it uh, creates its own world that it inhabits its own world that isn't too indebted to the original movie, but still has the nostalgia factor going for where you saw that original movie and those characters are returning. So you're interested in seeing what they do next. Um, I don't know. There's many things, but that's one that stands out to me when you first want to watch a sequel. I'm going to pick on, Oh, I said 1984. Whoops. Yeah. Take a drink. I'm going to pick on this a little, um, a good story. I'm going to back up. And well, story or sequel? Word, sequel. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go back up. A good story has an emotional arc for a character mm -hmm. where they start the movie as A and end the movie as B, and we see that progression. Mm -hmm. A character growth. Yeah, that's it, uh, that's basic story. I mean, that's that's kind of the stories that Hollywood has been following ever since its inception, you know? The three-act structure is kind of where it comes from. And you can have many different plot points. You can have ten plot points within a three-act structure. But really, all said and done, it's about three acts. And that usually involves a character being one kind of person learning to be another. And that's how it ends. Are you saying that's yeah. not what they do with Wonder Woman 84? I'm going to argue that, yes. Okay. Yes, I am. But uh, what would you think of Wonder Woman 84? Is there anything left to say about Wonder Woman that we need to cover so we don't have to go back as far as 84 is concerned? I don't think so, because, I mean, the key points are Guy died, and she's Wonder Woman. Yes, it's very so important that Steve Trevor died. Yes. In the first movie. You have to know that. Well, do you have to know that? Because that's something I tried to do. I purposely didn't watch the first Wonder Woman, so that it was a little foggy, so I could see if I can enjoy this movie without being able to directly call back to it. Does yeah, it I, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't watch, I, I didn't see Wonder Woman in, since it first came out before I watched the sequel, but I knew that he died. I remember that part. Right. But they, they you know, in, in the sequel, you, you get that idea that he's dead because she talks about him a couple times, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. I just wanted to see if the ideas that they were throwing out just right. held up as just its own cohesive movie. All right. And so I, I, I did the whole Wonder Woman synopsis. So... It's your chance now. You talk about Wonder Woman. Without your opinions, just tell me the story. How about that? And then we can get into our opinions. What happens right, in, here. in the sequel? Here we go. Wonder Woman 1984. Roughly 70 years after the first movie, we find Wonder Woman working at the Smithsonian. She, along with a co-worker, have to look at a magic rock that gets brought in by the FBI 
they accidentally discover that this rock grants wishes at which point gal gadot wishes for her dead boyfriend from 70 years ago because she has literally done nothing for 70 years what's her name Kristen wig Kristen wig yeah yeah uh she wishes to be more like wonder woman then we enter maxwell lord played by pedro pascal i love him the mandalorian Um, the mandalorian which this was made right around like i don't think season one of the mandalorian had been shown yet so he was just getting in on projects yeah well he was in game of thrones he was oberon who was a very popular character for maybe six episodes before he got his face crushed yep and his beautiful face crushed because he was all about he was the handsome beautiful talented prince or king or whatever he was in that show and it was a a pretty tragic end for him anyway yeah he really should have won and yeah (laughs) that beautiful face i love him um he plays maxwell lord who's well known in the comics in the comics wonder woman actually breaks his neck um so she's a killer sure um she kills a lot he really wants the the stone for whatever reason this oil businessman has actually been investigating wishes and uh he now do we think that he hired the robbers to go into that jewelry store uh yes because that's the only way that it makes sense that he knows to go to the museum to look for the stone right which he finds and then Kristen wig finds him so attractive and i don't blame her that she gives him the stone at which point him somehow knowing what the stone is makes the stone part of himself and he just starts granting wishes to everybody for some reason that we're not sure of at first it's so he's rich but then later on it's so that he's healthy the magic of the stone is very out there um but then uh wonder woman starts losing her powers because of her wish because every wish has a consequence which is pretty famous with wish stories um so she starts losing her powers but she gets steve trevor back the guy from the first movie that sacrificed himself but of course it's a wish so he's actually just his soul is in another guy's body and so nothing's perfect but they get to spend some wonderful time together and then uh kristen wig gets really strong because she's becoming like wonder woman and she was you know that standard movie trope of a dorky woman with long stringy hair just like selena kyle and batman too mm-hmm. um and she turns into this empowered strong woman um which is a great message that the only way you can feel empowered is if the, you have superhuman powers she but anyway so she gets empowered she hooks up with uh max maxwell lord maxi max lord what do you want to call him? maxi yeah uh she hooks up with him because they all figure out quickly that the stone is what's causing all of this. She wants to keep her cool powers. Diana needs to stop him so that the world isn't destroyed. But the only way that this can happen is if she renounces her wish and she has to let go, finally let go of her love, Steve. And she does, and she gets her powers back. She puts on some ugly gold armor She goes and fights Kristen Wiig, who's become more crazy. She actually looks like a cheetah because Maxwell Lord gave her some free wishes because apparently he can do that. And then Wonder Woman fights her and beats her and drowns her until she renounces her wish. Then she beats up Max Lord, but not really. She more just talks him into being a better person, which he does. He runs away with his kid. What happens to Kristen? in wig i don't remember and i just watched it last night she's just kind of shown at the end that she as well as everyone else in the world renounced their wish so i I, and it just kind of left it at that she was just it was raining or whatever and she was just like looking sad like leaning up against where she just got her ass kicked feeling pity for herself and that was pretty much it they never really showed her again after that yeah and so pretty much the movie ends with wonder woman and Kristen wig being the only characters that have any actual 
changes occur to them, everybody else is kind of reset to zero because they undid all their wishes. Yeah. So, well, Max Lord so, is definitely changed. I would say. Yeah. He went through a character arc. He may have the he had the biggest character arc. I think. Well, I don't know him and Kristen Wiig. I guess. Yeah, I mean, there are some arcs there. I don't know if I'd call them successful arcs. Mm -hmm. Now, but, um, I got to say, your your demeanor when you're talking about the movie lets me know that you don't like it very much. That's actually, <laughs> I, yeah, that's make it official. I enjoyed Wonder Woman 84. I was going to start this podcast with a joke that I forgot, and I'm going to start it now. It was going to be, hey, everyone, welcome to Aaron and Justin Talk Sequels. I'm Justin, that's Aaron, and today we're talking about Superman for the Quest for Peace, <laughs> the see. classic final chapter in the yeah. Superman saga, um, because when they wrote this movie, they definitely were just cribbing off of other people's notes. I like this movie. Um, really? Yes. You I do like not this like this movie. movie. You did not like this movie. Are you kidding me? I <laughs> liked this movie what i was the most excited for was oh god see i had my dates wrong when i was watching this movie so i give it a little bit more credit than it probably deserves when aquaman when shazam aquaman and wonder woman changed the tone for the dc extended universe movies where they really were doing something on their own i was all about it i'll take a 80s superhero movie the same way that I will take Shazam and having an updated uh, big movie. You know, if you make big but with superheroes, that's fun. If you do Freaky Friday but with superheroes, that's fun. I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, <laughs> um, when this movie was made, I thought this was going to be showing progression from then to now. Like, they took that success and they built on it. They took the lessons of Shazam and they built on it with this movie. But this movie got greenlit so fast that in terms of planning, this movie really should be in that clump. And it's not a new stage for the DC movies, if that makes sense. Yeah. Their strategy was still pretty much the same with this than the first Wonder Woman. Um, and so there's no narrative advancement. What I wanted to see from this movie was a little bit stronger serialized storytelling where... Not only taking threads from the first movie and building on them to make this a more complete character, while also telling a whole story, but also building in elements to be explored further in future movies. What this is just a movie about Wonder Woman, and that's it. And so that's fine, but in the broader world of expectations for what people look for with these movies i feel like people were a little let down because they didn't get that yeah i think you uh need to forget about shazam and anything else that has to do with dcu i don't think Shazam's great no it's it's a fine movie it's a fine movie i just don't the audience for wonder woman is not shazam's audience it's not the same thing I think they were the same audience. I just don't think they are. I think that this, more than anything, is a Patty Jenkins film. And this is the movie she's wanted to make on her own. It has nothing to do with anything else. And I think that's what makes it a success. And, and to me, I was pleasant, pleasantly surprised with the film. Because I was ready to just be like, this is going to be some more Wonder Woman garbage, just like the first one. Self-serious, trying to change the world, realizing it's hard to do, and then you're out. So, but now we get this film that's, um, it leans pretty heavy in the eighties, but that makes it fun. Uh, it's very positive right from the start. And that's what I liked about it as well. When you watch the movie, like the way you were explaining it made me feel like a lot of people who didn't like it, they talked about a magic stone. And once they brought in the magic stone, it turned so many people off, but I guess I don't know why. You're watching Magic Stone was the best part of the movie. Well, I, that's not how it sounded like when you were talking about it. You were just like some Magic Stone, you know, like it was a piece of shit plot device. But I was just like, I thought it was silly at first, but then I was like, oh, that's funny. But then I totally went with it. And I'm just like, that is a that is a pretty unique take. The wishing uh, as far as a super movie hero movie goes and that they ran with that so much. Uh, I was fine with it. I was just like, okay, like if that's what we're going to do, if we're going to do wishes 
I'm cool with it. And anything that follows because of that is fine. And that's why Steve's reappearance didn't bother me either. I was just like, all right, well, that would be her wish. Because she has been, no pun intended, why? pining for him for 70 years. <laughs> She's been in the world. She has to have met one cool I know. dude in I know. 70 years years maybe if you're when you're like immortal or how, yeah, whatever i don't know if she's immortal but she lives longer than most people i think she's immortal i mean all of her i'm mean, like her mom they grow up it seemed like you know i mean she she's probably gonna look 50 someday like her mother right or like robin ray i mean that's what it seemed to or, me that they do grow gradually they do age gradually yeah, that's fair. Anyway, maybe I, I, maybe yeah. if you live a long time, there are just certain things that stick out, you know, to you, and 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 you would just feel love for this one person. Maybe I don't know. I guess I gotta watch it's Highlander the again. First <laughs> man she ever met. If anything, that was a schoolyard crush, and she's fooling herself. Damn it! All right. Well, um, um for the purposes of the the sequel to Wonder Woman. You got to bring back Steve. You can't, you either have a new love interest, which would have been fine too, or you bring back Steve. Here's Steve. They went in that route. I'm okay with that. It is funny that they took his spirit and put him in another body, which Wikipedia explained it as she's the only one that sees him as Chris Pine, but I don't think so. I think she, like everyone else in the world, sees him as this guy he is now. Just for our benefit as a viewer, it's Chris Pine again. Yeah, that's, what that's exactly what happened. Right. Like, yeah, it's just Chris Pine in her eyes. Um, no, no, I mean that she does not see Chris Pine. She sees this new guy. Oh, well, it's, yeah. It's probably. our benefit that it's Chris Pine. Yeah, yeah. it's just... I'm just saying Wikipedia... Heart, she sees Chris Pine. Sure, yeah. Wikipedia explains it as she's the only one that sees the real Steve as he was. But I don't think so. I think she's realizes it's Steve inside this new person. But she sees this new person. So it's actually probably pretty exciting for her. <laughs> you know she's with another handsome dude but it still gets to be steve you know yeah, I she can't nice take on wait it. to just rape the hell out of this guy <laughs> it's um, not yeah i mean i read some of the criticisms the criticisms about that like a lot of uh people were saying it was rape it was uh there were you know there wasn't any he never gave his permission to be and i'm just like look this is why it's an 80s film take a drink <laughs> it, exactly because this is not shit we worried about back then we didn't fucking care about stuff like that that is overthinking this not overthinking the way i was overthinking with those zeus thing it's overthinking like trying to find a fault with it and that's what bothered me about it where uh and i took this from a, a reviewer years ago and i don't remember who it was but he always said there's little to be gained from explaining how magic works and i think that's true in most films you don't have to explain how magic works, it just kind of ruins it. So it's oh. a wishing stone. She wished him back. This is how he got him back. Be fine with it. That works to me. The thing that I really disliked about the movie is just there's no character development for Diana. There's no reason for me to care about her between either of the two movies, really, other than the fact that she's Wonder Woman and we're supposed to. Yeah. Something I really liked about the first movie... It's just another narrative device, but whatever it is, movie starts in the present. She thinks about the story, mm -hmm. goes back to the present. Like, this movie would have almost been served well by her being in the present again and finishing out the thought of Chris Pine because it's just two separate stories and two separate timelines that just happen to feature the same character. Like, yeah. I'm just shoulder shrug on wonder woman even though she's awesome in these movies see i just think that the only reason she was the first movie started in the present is because she was part of the dc extended or universe just but she's not anymore bruce. yeah exactly it was all it was is that bruce you saw wayne enterprises on the truck that pulled up to the smithsonian or to the louvre or wherever she was yeah that was france yeah, yeah. so it's the louvre the louvre Louvre. Louvre. and Louvre. delivering that picture of her from world war one that was they had to tie it together but now they don't have those constraints this really can be its own kind of movie uh but i liked the beginning with the little girl who was actually the little girl from the original film too who played yeah. her again which is nice uh where she learned that you can't win by cheating you can't win by being dishonest and that's how she tried to win that race at the beginning she took the shortcut and her aunt was saying you can't do that in life to get anywhere and then that ties in with the bigger thing 
with Maxwell Lord and what he was trying to do. Yeah, you can't just wish yourself successful. Exactly. You have to work at it. So I'm cool with the Magic Stone. And from the Magic Stone, uh, he's a failed businessman, which comes, it's pretty clear. Uh, but I, I really, I don't know, it worked for me with the son. Like, he really wanted to look good in his son's eyes. And it bothered him as a father that he couldn't. But he was a mess. You know, he's a total mess. He was such a mess. Kids yeah. don't think like that kid. Yeah. Like, and that part's what's funny. Like, as a parent, you don't actually say the things that he said to this kid. That just shows you how much of a mess he is. Yeah. Where he's so obsessed with image that. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm with that. But may, maybe Dad's it's also not a some... loser. No. Maybe it's also, uh, you know, that might be a failure in the in the writing and that it's too much. Um exposition or whatever you want to say you know it's too in your face maybe of him actually saying i'm not a loser you know which is something maybe you wouldn't really say to your child you fear it and then you go about your you go about your way to make him not feel it but you never really say it so right. i'm I, never... i'm with you on that one but I, anyway oh. i thought that his character change throughout the movie was deserved and, and the way that she turned him around at the end and he was and it was it was genuine his love for his son and he realized that, that was more important than what he was trying to get across so i thought that was deserved as far as his character arc it changed him can you plot that arc out for me cuz i'm struggling so we start with failed businessman yeah so he's a failed businessman and he's got debt he's got promises he hasn't been able to keep and he knows it's all going to result in him going to prison basically but this mall heist which is a great set piece, I thought, where we get Ooh, to see Wonder go. Woman very comic-like. And that's what I liked about it, that she was kicking ass comic style. And that was fun. This whole, that's what was funny to me, is that there's this jewelry store in a mall that's like a front for like antiquities. I'm like, really? In the mall of all places? Like, that just felt like Jeff Johns typing. Yeah, right, right. And... But I'm like, okay, whatever. Not a big problem. It's obviously a front. So uh, somehow from that heist... Max Lord was going to get in possession of that stone. That's how you have to know. But it obviously got intercepted because Wonder Woman stopped it. So then it went to the Smithsonian, as all the artifacts did from this place. So then he, but he was aware. I think, he, for, how does he know that it's a magic stone? If I watch it again, maybe they give, maybe they give more details about how he really investigated it. But I think he was just so, he's such a failed businessman that he's looking for a quick fix. And this is what he came about. He believed it to be real. We are living in a world with an Amazon goddess who was created by Zeus, apparently out of clay. So maybe other people are aware of things like that in this world too. And Superman, who's an alien coming from a different planet. So the fact that he thought there was a magic stone and wanted to find it, sure. So anyways, he gets the stone. He wishes to become the stone. Therefore, he it's like one of those uh genie loopholes you know which robin yes. williams would tell you right off the top don't even try it you can't wish for more wishes you can't raise the dead uh you can't make anyone fall in love right those were his three rules which pretty much covered everything and yeah that Aladdin. pretty much covers yeah. everything um but i think that is a pretty good loophole he could he could wish to be the stone oh my god we didn't see that coming you know so now he's able to grant wishes as long as he can physically touch people. But every wish has a consequence. And that's the part I was going to ask you about. Is he falling apart because he's absorbing some of the consequence or something? I have no idea. and They never really say why he's getting sick. Or did um, every time you wish on the stone, did the stone slowly fall apart? But I don't remember that happening either. No, none of that. Happens. So it had an, like, it had a finite amount of wishes it could actually give or something. I don't know. So let's do a quick primer on the magic stone. Mm -hmm. Magic stone will grant one wish, yeah. and it will take apart or it will take away the thing you care about the most. Something like that, yeah. Something like that. Um, but when it becomes Lord, uh, he grants the wish, but he also gets to pick what he takes away yes and so that's becomes up to him rather than being random from the gods yeah that makes more later... sense to me now thank you he would decide on the consequence per wish which is something yes. that was more random when it was just a stone yes so what that did was take away uh wonder woman's powers basically because she wished steve back she was slowly losing powers yeah and that was the stone doing it not maxwell exactly 
we later find out that this this stone is just like the lasso of truth. Yeah. It's the same concept where God's imbued power mm-hmm. into an object. Yeah. And so the lasso represents truth. Uh, the rock represented trickery. Yeah, because it was, it was created by lies. Dolo, dolos. Some lies, way. treachery, deception, and mischief. Yeah. And so, yeah, we're essentially dealing with just an ad- artifact just like the lasso of truth, mm-hmm. and it just happens to be inside of him. Yeah, which um, makes me want to yell to people who didn't, who thought it was too silly. I was like, but you like the lasso of truth. You like this. You like that. Like, it's okay to believe in magic rocks when you're watching a movie. Like, don't let that get in the way. Don't let wishes get in the way of enjoying the film. That's what I feel. Okay, so we were talking about uh, Maxwell Lord's character arc, his story arc. Yeah, in so the 1980s. So we started with... <laughs> in, in the 1980s. Uh, <laughs> and so we started as failed businessman, and he, he absorbs the stone mm-hmm. and gets these powers, and he starts getting everything he wants. Where is the point where that changes and he starts to become not as bad is it just at the end with wonder woman i as if memory serves i do feel it's when she uses the lasso of truth around him to speak to the world because he when he was talking to the president he realized that they had a satellite system conveniently on display (laughs) in the in the oval office where he could quote end quote touch everyone you know, and then With that photons. Yeah, something like that. And then that way he could grant wishes because he was getting he was getting mad that he could only one at one at a time. It and he was just like, I gotta talk to a group of people. I gotta be like a like a priest, but touch everybody. You know, like all at one time and a big room or something. So this was his way of using you know Reagan's Star Wars ish type <laughs> missile defense thing or whatever it was. Which seemed to be, like, off the coast of the ocean. Mm. It seemed to be far away. Yeah. So then everybody in the world starts making wishes, which um, can really mess up your continuity as far as the DC Universe's extent is concerned. So I'm just like, how is she going to correct this? So she does use her godly imbue, imbue, imbued, whatever, uh, lasso of truth to counteract what he's trying to do. And I think... Not only does it make people see or tell the truth, but I think it makes them see the truth, perhaps, is what they're trying to say with the lasso. So she was able to use the lasso to speak to him, to speak to the world, to renounce, to do what they felt was right and renounce their wishes. But at the same time, it allowed him to see his whole life and to see basically what she learned as a child, that you can't cheat to get what you want. You have to be honest And you can't take the shortcut. And that is what made him realize that it was more important to do things the right way and to correct what he was doing wrong and to be a good father to his son. That sounds right. Like, it sounded like it was important that Wonder Woman was able to stop the enemy with words. Yes. And isn't that that great that we didn't have to sit through a CGI eyesore, as I like to say. I'm going to trademark that because that's what I always call it, where she has to battle somebody at the end. You know what I mean? I wholeheartedly agree. And isn't it great that she didn't have any heads in her sack like that Zack Snyder picture? (laughs) Well, that would have made sense, though. I mean, if it was during the, uh, what did I read, like the Crimean War, um, everybody was taking heads. (laughs) It's fine. If she wasn't taking heads, they would have taken her head, okay? Exactly. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. And if it was during, like, you know, the, if they put her, like, after the Civil War, like, during all the Indians, she would have had scalps hanging left and right. You know what I mean? Like, it's just what you did back then. I'm not excusing it. I'm just saying that's how, that's history. Okay, so that's actually pretty good. Um, let me let me try to do Kristen Wiig's Yeah, because I, I know we got to talk about her, too. She's a big deal. Because um, she was fantastic i enjoyed isn't her. that great because i they said she was going to be cast as that i was just like oh, i was gonna be a piece of shit i was just yeah. not excited about it i was just like really her for this and she was so good she, did and good she was believable and you felt great about her you cared about this character yeah and do you know what these movies about wonder woman need characters that are going to show up again in another movie yeah would i be excited to see maxwell lord again yep would yeah. I be excited to see Kristen Wiig again? Yup. And I think um, they might have more to do with her because she didn't really get an ending in this movie. Well, you know, here's the 
here's the issue though the next wonder woman movie is supposed to take place in present day right which if you're keeping track so she will be 36 years later yeah so Kristen wig would be about 60 in present day well i'm sure they'll explain it by because she at once had those powers maybe it a little maybe there's maybe there's a little bit left of wonder woman's powers that she has inside of her that'll keep her immortal (laughs) something i mean i know she she became cheetah by wishing it and that is funny if you think about it but at the same time how else were they going to do it they were going to do it like every other movie she would have been uh doomsday from justice league you know she would have been part of some scientific experiment with a crazy doctor who would inject her with animal DNA, and then she would have became Cheetah. That's the only yes. way you can write this movie with a Cheetah in this world we live in now, because that's how they write superhero movies. But they were like, no, she just happens to wish to be a predator, and this is what she turns into. Again, I was just like, nice. I liked that. As silly as it was, I was like, cool, that's a good way to do it. It was good. It was yeah. really good. And otherwise, it would have been the beginning of Batman Forever. Like, this would have been just another Poison Ivy yeah right exactly like she would have been pushed into a table of things like the flash or like poison ivy right and she yeah, all, and of all of a sudden, sudden gets the power, she had the power <laughs> of a cheetah <laughs> right um, um uh, and in in your synopsis you said that she wished to be more like wonder woman but she actually which i also liked she just wished to be more like diana who she didn't yeah. know was wonder woman and that's the twist is that that's why she surprisingly became powerful because the person she wished for was actually Wonder Woman. The stone knew it, but she didn't know it. She just wanted to be confident like Diana, not yeah. Wonder Woman. But that's, surprise, you get to be Wonder Woman now, too. I thought that was kind of a nice twist. She starts off as just an average Selena Kyle from Batman 2. Totally Selena and Kyle, yeah. she gets that power. She gets that empowerment that she desperately lacked in her life. And her character arc is a little darker because she starts out as a good person and ends as a bad person. She gets the power. She loves it. She never wants to lose that feeling of empowerment. And Wonder Woman has to literally drown it out of her. You think she ends as a bad person though? I mean, isn't that they leave it completely ambiguous in the last stuff. Well, she she, like everyone else and renounces it. That's why she's human again. That's one of those ones just the same way that we never, hear wonder woman's wish because it would have been uh tacky yeah we never hear her denounce it right right so there's the ambiguity that you're looking for for her to show up again 30 years later yeah is it's never said out loud i mean maybe Um, i mean you know they said it'll probably take present in the present day but maybe it'll take place in the 90s or whatever i don't know i don't know where they'll go with the next it doesn't really leave it open to if, if I don't write the movie, I don't know what the hell it's going to be. I can't even guess. I'm sure it won't be connected to this film, really. It'll just be another Wonder Woman adventure. And then we have Wonder Woman's arc. Yeah. Uh, Wonder Woman's arc is a lonely woman who secretly fights crime and is an archaeologist. Or not an archaeologist, works in a museum. Uh, and the movie ends with her being a lonely woman who works at a museum yeah (laughs) and this is the first time i've really thought about this since we recorded this this movie plays very similarly to those story structures of those batman movies yeah i was just gonna say we have the most interesting arcs from the villains and then the actual hero they don't change much over the course of the movie this movie really is just an homage to that time, and it does it really well. Yeah, I, uh, I liked the movie because it's a good superhero movie. Is it a good movie? Uh, eh, it's all right. But yeah, it, it, it has a problem where, much like you said, the Batman films, the, the villains are the ones that drive the plot, and then the hero is just there to react. And that's basically what Wonder Woman is doing, much like Batman always did in those movies, in the Tim Burton films, you know what I mean? So that that's why it it probably fails as a, as an actual movie, but as a superhero movie, it's I thought exactly what you needed as far as fun blockbuster stuff goes, you know, fun entertainment movie goes. But I, I will say that she may not, because what are you how are you going to change Wonder Woman? She already you already saw her grow up and be less naive in the first movie, so now you just see her living her life. I don't really know what you're expecting as um, a viewer to see her change, but I I just wanted to say that. I think her 
realizing that Steve had to renounce, she had to renounce her wish and lose Steve again. I thought that was well earned. I did feel the emotion behind that where she realized you're here and that's why I can't save the world. So I have to get rid of you in order to, I have to move on from you finally in order to save the world. That is totally well earned. And it also still is one of the problems with the movie where it just, that 70 years. Yeah. It's I know. really hard it's, to get it's over. It's hard. <laughs> um, so do you think that the movie earns any kind of feeling of her, her re- reclaiming her place in the world that she gets some closure from Steve being there and then gone again. I think she's uh, totally over I'm him now. setting you up. I think she's totally think... over him now. Because yeah. she saw him again at the very end, right? She saw the actual guy he was. Yeah. Yeah. But she didn't jump him or anything or be like, hey, we should hook up sometime. She was like, let him go. Even though that's who she's been looking at this whole time, this whole movie. And that was Steve. And she sees him walking up again, you know? She just let it go. She's like, you, you know, know what? what? You're done. I respect your opinion. But yeah. um, that also doesn't explain why she spends the next 36 years being completely anonymous still and not part of the world. Mm. Well, this is like, inherent with trying to tell prequel movies after you wrote your other movies in the past. What are you going to do? You got to fit things in, you know? Okay, it was a year later, man. Like, they wrote that script within a year. Uh, yeah, but she was able to make she's able to make more of the movie she wanted to make and not be beholden to that stuff. So I feel like that's why you got to be cool with it because Jenkins really wanted to do her own thing on this. And she's like, "Look, these DC movies are not where they're making a billion dollars, but they're not working. Let me do my thing." And, and they're her probably thing like, is "Okay." Good. It's it was it's better than Snyder's thing. Oh my god. You know what I mean? <laughs> Even when she tries to emulate the crappy special effects from the 80s which you could see over and over in this movie yeah that they did on purpose and it was awesome um they just look good she made yeah. it look natural this movie literally could have been made in 1984 and we wouldn't have batted an eye <laughs> it's oh. uh some things didn't land like i all the comedy with steve in the 80s you know it just didn't it wasn't funny to me you know like i, I actually thought the trash can joke was funny where she, they were looking at the art and then he was just like, "Oh, what is this?" She's like, "That's just a trash can," because <laughs> it does look like it could be art. And he was, but because it made me think of a higher thing, like, "Yeah, what is art and what is just a trash can?" I mean, that was produced by somebody. That was designed by somebody to be mass produced. And he wanted it to look in it, or she wanted it to look in a certain way, even though it's a waste disposal thing. How come that's not art? This opened up a huge thing for me. And I want to take uh, one a- little segue here because this will be fun. Uh, the Rocky movies, uh, Rocky three, I think, uh, it's when Rocky is, he's like, he's the heavyweight champion. Yeah. He's the heavyweight champion after, after the sequel, because he defeated Apollo Creed in the sequel. Right. So we pick up a couple years later after he's been winning match and he's, you know, just on top of the world. He's on the Wheaties box. He's got sports illustrated magazines, whatever. They make a statue of him, right? The famous Rocky statue that they made for the movie. And then they gave it to Philadelphia, the city. And we're just like, hey, do you want to put up this Rocky statue we made? It's a real bronze statue. It's like any other statue you'd see. It's of Rocky. Now, back in 1980-whatever, when they made Rocky Three, maybe Rocky wasn't as nostalgic the way we see him now. But the city didn't want it. They were like, that's just a movie prop. That's not art. But they were just like, so what is, what is a prop and what is art? You know, like we, we made the statue of him. It's art. But they were like, we don't want it because it's just a movie prop. But anyway, since then, it's actually on display in Philadelphia. So you could yeah, see it somewhere. Say, what statue did they end up putting up? That was the statue they ended up putting up. They didn't put okay. it on the steps where they thought it would be cool. Because you know how he runs up the steps and he's like, yeah. It's on the steps now, I, I think. don't think it is. I think it's near that area, but it's not on the steps. I'm Googling it. You keep That's talking. fine, yeah. I But I just, I love that thought of what is art and what isn't. And it's all about context. If it's if you put trash in it, all of a sudden it's not art. <laughs> but I'm like that trash can could be art. This is a real huge segue, and I don't know why I wanted to go in this route. But anyway, this is why everybody tunes into these podcasts because you never know what you're going to learn. 
All right, it does not look like it's on steps. Yeah, I don't think it is. I think it's nearby. But anyway, now it's a work of art because everybody loves Rocky and he's an American, you know, hero. Uh, To add on to the segue, possibly my favorite statue of a famous person is the town in Indiana Mm -hmm. where Catherine Janeway was born on Star Trek Voyager. Put up a statue of her <laughs> saying future birthplace of Catherine Janeway. That's pretty funny. Exactly. That is the best stuff to like uh, learn about. Right. All right. So ways that this movie becomes problematic because it's based on the 1980s. Yeah. And then we'll get wrapped up. Oh, wait, no. Back up. Sure. Back up. Sure, sure. I asked you if you had an alternative pitch to this movie, something that would have been better. And you said you didn't really because you enjoyed it. I could probably but... like fix little problem things in my mind that I didn't like, but overall, I was just like, ah, it, it, as far as a, if you had a synopsis for the story, I'd see it and say like, yeah, that's cool. I have an elevator pitch. Go for it. Based on just information from this movie, that would have made everyone, including like the AT and T corporate overlords, happy. Wonder Woman <laughs> and Kristen Wiig work together at a museum. A wishing stone shows up because of whatever. The two of them swap bodies Mm. where Kristen Wiig, for the first time, gets that confidence that she's never had because she's Wonder Woman. And then Wonder Woman has to actually learn what it's like to be a human and to survive on her wit and her intellect. And they both have this epic fight at the end where they come to that realization, Wonder Woman, what it's like to be human and Kristen Wiig, that she doesn't need all of this to be empowered and they swap bodies back and everything is happy at the end. So no wishing going on. Well, I mean, there could have been a wish, but basically, yeah, Wonder Woman learns what it's like to be a person because it seems like she still hasn't. So Kristen Wiig Kristen... would have wished to be her, and then she would have yeah, had to do it anyways. Like ah, it's it still Freaky Friday. Worked. Gotcha. Yeah, and the consequence was a Freaky Friday, mm-hmm. and it plays into take a popular thing from old movies and turn it into a superhero thing. So the company executives would have loved it. Yeah, and the movie would have been a tight ninety. Um, anyway, that's my pitch. Yeah, that's so, not bad. It's not bad. But I would, yeah. I would have fired you. Honestly, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh whatever what was a better pitch for you i don't know i was perfectly fine with what it was yeah i figured you'd say that uh, <laughs> reasons this movie is problematic yes, this is fun i have a big one okay go uh middle eastern terrorist <laughs> oh my god ever the way that reviews talked about this i thought it was going to be a bigger thing I, so yeah I, think... I didn't think it was a big thing i didn't think it's an i never think it's an issue it's just a movie it's not like it's out of nowhere that terrorists can be Middle Eastern. I mean, they can be anything, obviously. They can even be, well, they can't be, they can only, if, if you're American terrorist, you're a white dude. <laughs> you're not going to be anybody else. <laughs> no, that's true. But um, that it was used at all it made me feel like, oh, this is going to be a problem, you know. I mean, why do you think they included it? Was it just to be true to the 80s like because yeah that would have fit in perfectly in the 80s with everything they did often i think it's included uh because uh in order to make a film you can shoot cheaper in those kind of countries you know that are in europe that are in middle east those are the countries that actively try to get hollywood dollars there and they have insane tax cuts that's why a lot of movies you see uh, like that that's why like Liam Neeson is and those taken movies always take place in Germany or Belgium or wherever. You know what I mean? Like this is why those movies are shot there because they get tax breaks, you know? So I'm not saying that's exactly what happened, but that wouldn't surprise me that they had a Middle Eastern set piece and you know, what are you going to do? Well, they got to be the people she's fighting have to be Middle Eastern. So there you go. Anyway. So obviously we have a man who's, quickly has the soul of another man inhabiting his body and they just walk this guy around like a meat puppet yeah um problematic for sure how could they have solved that they could have very simply done the most simplest thing 
and just have him materialize, right? Yeah. She's looking this way. There's nothing behind her. She turns around. There he is. It's a simple camera trick. Just it was have a him wish. appear. But I, here's why they had him inhabit, I believe. is because they wanted to get some of that good 80s comedy going. They wanted him to have a place. They wanted him to have clothes he could wear so they could joke about what he's wearing. They wanted him to joke about eating Pop-Tarts. That's the only reason they did that. I think that's just they just wanted him to have a place. and There would be no reason for him to have a place unless he inhabited some other somebody else's body. I made this joke with you before I had saw the film, but I said if they had at the very end of the movie, and it could have been when Diana saw him, well, no, that wouldn't have worked. But <laughs> somehow him make a comment about all of his Pop-Tarts were gone. Yeah, wouldn't that have been amazing? <laughs> like, it would have... It would have just made it feel a little better if we heard him talk at any point. Otherwise, he could have been a serial killer. He could have been a child rapist. And she is just hanging out with him. Yeah, and she's got, like, like, this woman who controls the ancient history wing of the Smithsonian is is caught on camera with a convicted child molester. (laughs) It's going to ruin her career. You remember her as Diana in this museum, how stuffy she is a little bit serious yeah. she is yeah she, those they she was clearly the boss of this wing and those employees must have hated her the constant joke would have been that this chick needs to get laid <laughs> like it would have been and then halfway right. through the movie she shows up late for work with a guy yep. and she's talking about nonsense that would have been a total 80s 80s move did we forget anything else that was problematic have you forgot to drink every time We've mentioned the word eighties. I have been drinking and I'm through four shots, ladies and gentlemen. All right, well so I said I said eighties again. Oh sorry. So you're gonna have to take one. There you go. Uh how you feeling? You feeling good? Yeah. Nothing? Hmm. I'm probably, you know, a little off topic, right. but I'm not feeling drunk. So Jeff Johns. What's his history? <sighs> Jeff Johns is a great comic book writer. Yeah. Did you ever read and, his stuff? Yeah, because he had Did he write Flashpoint? Um, Did you read Flashpoint? I did not read Flashpoint. And... I feel like he did, and it was really good. And I'm not the biggest DC follower. I'm more with Marvel. But um, I did end up, because I, I got the first issue of Flashpoint for free, and then I ended up buying the rest of them because I was really pulled into it. Like, I really liked it. Well, it's supposed to be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's because the Flash goes back in time to um, using his speed power uh, to save his mother, who's always been the reason he's been a crime fighter is to try to save people like his mother, but he's also like a police scientist. So he goes back, but he ends up changing and everything. And like one of the coolest things is that Bruce is not Batman. Thomas, his father is Batman because yeah. Bruce and his mother were shot in crime alley. And that made Thomas become Batman, which is one of the coolest reveals in the whole thing. Anyways, it's just a very good story and it's what they used in order to, They've done it a couple times in history, but they to reset the whole timeline and, and, and try to get new readers to not think that there's too much history that you have to know in order to enjoy Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. But then they kind of went back on it after a couple years anyways, you know, so whatever. Which they always do. Yeah, Jeff Johns has some of the greatest runs because he also did Infinite Crisis. Yeah, Infinite Crisis, right. Uh, he did. He brought Hal Jordan back to life, which was one of my favorite runs. Right, and then he right. went on to write Green Lantern from for the next eight years. Well, now, did he turn him into the Parallax or whatever that was called? Remember that? No. Okay. He explained he turned it into Parallax was a basically a virus that got planted into hell and that none of it was hell's fault. Yeah. And he also brought back Barry as the Flash. Yes, that was a big thing. Yeah, that's that's the only Flash that I really have is the return of Barry. Did you ever read Wonder Woman? Getting back to Wonder Woman? You know, getting back to Wonder Woman, I never really have. I probably have one trade. What about you? I definitely have a number of free comics that have been Wonder Woman, but I've never searched it out i don't know nobody's ever really gave me something to read like nobody's ever gave me a pointer about like this is a really good story arc until recently there's one that came out called uh i think it's called wonder woman rare earth i don't know if you heard about that at all but it's like a futuristic take with her where she kind of wakes up in this apocalyptic earth i mean people have been raving about it like it was the best book of 2020 i think it just came out last year but anyway beyond that i don't i don't uh, i don't know i always thought that they've 
they've always tried to make her way more serious than I always felt she should be. Kind of like she's kind of like the Captain America of DC. You know what I mean? She's the Thor of DC. Really? Yeah. She's a she's boring kind of god. But she's an American based superhero. But then they gave her this Amazon kind of thing where she's not actually from America. She's actually a foreign thing. But then why does she embrace the American ideals? It's because it came out in the 40s. You know what I mean? Like that was really what well, it was. Yeah. So trying to make tr- truth justice in the American way, trying to make that work has been the biggest problem with Superman, Captain America, and Wonder Woman. And they've made it work here and there with, you know, success sometimes, I guess. I think they've done a good job in the movies making a character that I've always thought was boring in the comics yeah. not boring. <laughs> I know. The same way that Captain America is one of my favorite comic book characters now of all time because yeah. of the movies did it's you uh, read captain america like i read um maybe we talked about this already but i read uh the winter soldier there was like 12 issues like that came out that wasn't jeff johns that was somebody similar it was, maybe it was jeff Loeb. i don't know somebody like that no or it was jason aaron whatever so that came out in like 2004 but that was before the movies too and it was yeah. amazing yeah and i never thought captain a- america could be that cool I've read a lot of good Captain America. I've got a few trades, but they're always the one trade I have. This is comics, and this is why the movies can be crazy sometimes, where the Avengers become the government of the world. Yeah, right. We're getting yeah. pretty nostalgic yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, we might as well get it wrapped up. Uh, well, this is why we I, do movies like Wonder Woman. This is why it's not just because everybody's watching them now it's because you know we have an affinity for the comics that we grew up with and wonder woman was definitely part of batman stories i read or justice league stories i read even though i never really read too much wonder woman there's a mid title or there's a mid credit scene in wonder woman 20 or 1984 right did you watch it i did yeah with uh is her name with uh the original wonder woman from the tv show yeah what's her name again i can't remember linda carter linda carter yeah there you go yeah because they, they had a story about asteria who was another warrior amazon and how she fought and fought and fought and some she say held back yes. the human hordes from destroying the amazons yes with her armor and that armor. exactly that's why uh, wonder woman has that armor at the end because that was asteria's armor so then this Wonder is Woman just their way looking for her, but she was only ever able to find her armor. Yes. yes. So this is their way of saying she's alive and well. And hey, guess what, people? It's Linda Carter. <laughs> well, and if you want to be silly, you could even say that she was the first Wonder Woman trapped on Earth. But she whatever. would have been in business the same time the other one Wonder Woman would have been around. So Oh, yeah. yeah. See, that doesn't work at all. Yeah. I did watch the Incredible Hulk show here and there. I'm mean, not that old that I was alive while it was on, but I definitely watched some episodes of the Bill Bixby show, you know, like here and there, but I never watched Wonder Woman. Okay, final thoughts. I liked Wonder Woman 1984. It's a pleasant standalone movie about Wonder Woman that falls short in cohesively taking elements from the first movie and building the character and it also fails to set up future movies. The whole franchise simply rests on the shoulders of Gal Gadot acting like that every single time, apparently. Yeah. I'm going to let you do your closing thoughts, and then I have two additional final thoughts. I, too, enjoyed Wonder Woman 1984. It was a campy retro delight. It was unexpected that I would like it because I'm really not a fan of the first movie. I thought it was too self-serious. So it was nice to see this a lighter tone, and it was nice that it was a standalone film. And if, like, I was thinking, if I was going to make a Wonder Woman movie, this is the movie I probably would have been happy to make. That's just how it felt to me. It just felt like something that I could really, it'd be fun working on and, and not feel like you were stuck in the, in the business of making superhero movies the way all superhero movies have to be made, you know? Yeah, I'm really big on that, and that's the one place where DC is really trying to be different by having a little bit of different fare with their dc movies or with their themes right the same well you're asking Marvel. you're asking like where are they going to go as a universe but that's the thing i think it just has to be a loosely connected universe i don't think they should worry about connecting things 
because they can't do it as good they as can't Marvel. do it as good and it works better if they're just if you want to have like callbacks to things if you want to throw you know whoever in the new flash movie like you know another kid then go for it but like it's kind of like De- uh, deadpool like deadpool just has fun with the x-men universe but it's not really indebted to it at all you know yeah that's a good one so i just thought that worked we missed a quick problematic thing yeah before my two final thoughts wonder woman is absolutely not able to live her life without a man <laughs> <laughs> and considering all things that probably shouldn't have been a thing like she doesn't feel fulfilled Oh, you're saying a 1980s problematic. Take take a drink. Ah, damn it. That's not cool. (laughs) No, just, uh, yeah. 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 In terms of the movie, very problematic. In the 80s, it would have been fine. What were my two final thoughts? I lost them. Mm -mm. Well, I guess that was my final thought, that I surprisingly liked the movie. So. All right. Well, if I remember what my final thoughts were, I will tweet about them when we release the movie episode the episode the episode this our episode yeah thanks for listening and uh yeah yeah. can i just say don't go to a theater to see movies you know what i mean if you're in america don't do that we are a festering i just place i think i i hate to say that just because like they're failing and that's unfortunate but i just don't know what's important enough to go to a place where people congregate in such a fashion you know like we're not going to concerts we're not going to ball games we're not like a theater is that kind of thing. If you need to go to the grocery store, makes sense. You know, you need to go buy something and you can try to stay away from people. Makes sense. Go ahead. If you have people within your bubble that you feel comfortable with, theaters are having uh, promotions where you could rent out an entire theater for a reasonable amount of money and being able to watch a current movie that way. Yeah. Do that. Um, yeah. Otherwise, wait until get the vaccine. Also, get go get it. People aren't getting it. One in three people aren't getting the vaccine. Are we allowed to get it? I thought I was not in that age range that would. Yeah, we're not yet. Oh, that's okay. neither here nor there. We want to go see movies in theaters. I want to see Ghostbusters Afterlife in a theater. I would like to see Ghostbusters Afterlife in a theater. And I'll tell you what, I would like to see Matrix 4 in a theater as well. I think that would be enter- entertaining. Oh, yeah, because we would have that option. Yes, that would be a great Christmas adventure. Right. So by Christmas, I want to go see a movie in a theater. Please do all the stuff, people. That's it. That's all I got. All right. Woo! Okay. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. All right. We're out. We're out.